So good evening, everyone. Thanks for being here. I do appreciate it. Tonight we're doing a public webinar on um, the volatility stop and what we call the trendinator indicators. I don't know. Is anyone here um, here for the first time? Never been to a hit run candlesticks right way options class before? Just type a Y if you're brand new. Never been here. I want to welcome you. For those of you who've been around for a while, and I see a lot of members here, I want to thank you for coming tonight. I know you've got to be, got to have better things to do on a Tuesday evening than listen to me yammer on about an indicator, but <laughs> so <laughs> let's go ahead and kick this off. I didn't see anybody that typed in a Y that they're brand new here for the first time. So how about we just get going? Um, what is the volatility stop? Is there anyone here that doesn't know what the volatility stop is? Robert, JP. All right. Well, you got, we got some new folks here to learn about the volatility stop. One thing, the first thing I'm going to do <clears throat> is you can see I've got a bunch of little indicators and stuff on here. I'm going to shut all of them off, including this is the volatility stop and I want to brighten it up because I don't have it turned all the way up the volatility stop is a very very simple indicator now it's it's an indicator that's on think I, I mean um, TC 2000 it's already in um, the system all you do right click add a plot type in volatility and you can see right there's the volatility stop indicator comes in if you have TC2000 you are good to go here are the settings that I use and let me talk about these settings for just a little bit um, I spent about a year testing the volatility stop indicator all different time frames all different settings and for me as a swing trader um, these settings work the best and and let me explain what I'm trying to do with the volatility stop how many in here would have um, um, it's way different than than that trailing stop on toss Steve because it this doesn't it doesn't adjust to volatility it's okay that you might use that but it is a different indicator okay because this actually adjusts to market volatility. Um, everyone has sound. Um, yeah, if someone could type in Gwen, she needs to reboot the room. I appreciate that. Awesome, thank you guys. So the volatility stop is um, with these settings. What I was trying to do is find a way to help folks do a better job at setting their stop losses. Anyone in here have trouble with setting their stop losses? Uh, JP, no, that is not true. It can be used on any time frame. So for anyone who has trouble trying to figure out where their stop losses might be, where support and resistance might be, the volatility stop will help you with that. So let's take a look at this Dow chart using these settings. And you can see when we were right in here, you can see our volatility stop settings are above price. They're telling us there's price resistance in this chart. They're telling us to be careful trading anything under here long. Okay, let's let's actually get out of this area where we don't have quite so much volatility and look over here where things were a little bit better. 
if you look in this area of the volatility stop, what we want to look for, would you guys agree that what we want to look for as a trader is we want to look for low risk entry trades? Where we don't have to risk a whole lot of capital to get into a position. And we would like to have a trade that has a high probability of producing results for us, right? So when we look at the volatility stop, we're looking for that trade where the market is showing us a little bit of smoothness. Things are starting to click in one direction and move along and we pop up and we pull back and see this entry right in here. See how we set right on top of this little volatility stop and it puts in these little flat locations like that and price responds to this. This is an entry and your stop loss should be going right underneath those dots. And the reason I say underneath those dots, the volatility stop is calculating the stop loss. Okay, based on the volatility, what we wanna do is be just under that, just in case market wants to go down and test the support and bounce off. So we wanna be just under that, something like where that arrow stands for that volatility stop. Now there was a question, can this be used on any time frame? Let's use this, let's go to a, um, um, a 15 minute chart of the diamonds. Can we use the volatility stop on a 15 minute chart in the diamonds? You can see these beautiful entry points right here where we have low risk into the trade. By the way, as a matter of fact, we took this trade in right way options the other day right on this candle. Using a short term option, we took 10% profits out of this trade somewhere right around there. Just a short intraday trade. Now, one of the reasons I like that entry there is because I take low risk on the trade. Buyers are stepping in, support is being shown to me. I can put my stop loss right underneath that level and then just follow it up. Okay. Now, what about this one over here? This one where we bounce way down, bounce back up, and we get this little pullback in here and buyers step in. Well, because of this extreme volatility that we experienced over here in this price action, what the volatility stop is telling us is that our stop loss to adjust to the volatility should be all the way down here if we were to enter on that candle. How many of you want to take a 15 minute trade with that much risk to the stop loss? So it's telling us, it's warning us when volatility is very high and the risk of the trade is high. Doesn't mean you can't take that position, but it's telling us that the risk of the trade is high. We might want to stand aside and wait for the next entry, which would have been right over in here. Move up, little pullback consolidation, buyer step up, stop loss right under here we take much less risk on that trade. Okay, so does it work on the 15 minute time frame? I'd say it really does. It does very, very well on virtually any time frame. If you're an intraday trader, if you're a longer term trader, I'm gonna show you an old um, chart of shop when shop was just trending very nicely on a weekly. Can you use the volatility stop on weekly trends? Oh my goodness, right? So what's the rule for the volatility stop? Well, one of the things that I use for a rule is I want to make sure that I am not trading when a stock is bouncing around in a range like this. So if I'm getting the volatility stop, if we're flipping back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, not interested in that trade. As a matter of fact, I'm not interested in this chart at all until right about, oops, 
my tools changed on me. Give me just a second. Until right about here. That's what I'm interested in that train. Okay. For an opportunity to enter that position. And then all I have to do is adjust my stop loss after the close of the period. So on the weekly, you don't want to adjust your stop loss on this until that period have, has closed. So if it's a daily, you want to wait until that period close, closes and adjust your stop loss. If you're trading a five minute chart, wait for that period closes, then think about adjusting your stop loss. I also don't want to be chasing things that are that are popping back and forth. So I want to see that break where red goes to green and then we get some kind of a pullback. We call them a PBO or a consolidation, which was really what this was over here. To tighten up that stop loss before we enter the trade so I can take a low risk entry into the position. Hey, is this making some sense, guys? <clears throat> yes, your, your stop loss should always be based upon, or in your trade plan, based upon the price of the chart, not a percentage. The price of the stock and the dollar amount to your stop loss. I get that question a lot. You know, if, if I entered this trade right here, and I'd get that question and I'd say my stop loss is underneath here. If I calculate my entry, let's say I get in right at the top of that candle. If I calculate my entry here to my stop loss, I'm gonna to calculate to the dollars that I have at risk, not the percentage. And the reason is, is because a percentage loss on a stock this size is much different than a percentage loss on a stock that's five bucks. I need to know the dollar amount that I'm risking on the trade to my stop loss. So you want to calculate out that dollar amount because if we don't know what the what our tolerance is to risk, we're always going to be we're always going to be emotional about the trade. We're going to make bad mistakes, emotional mistakes, right? Anybody in here admit to having a problem with micromanagement? Once you're in a trade, you just can't take your eyes off of it. You stare at it all day long, watching it wiggle around. And then as soon as it starts to wiggle against us, we micromanage and bail out of the trade. Maybe taking a loss and then it immediately reverses itself and goes up. Yeah, we've all done that. If you've traded very long, you we've all done that. One of the ways you avoid that is first, not taking great big risk trades, knowing when they're big risk trades. Volatility stop helps, helps us with that. Knowing that we have a low risk entry position and then knowing exactly how much we're putting at risk so that we size our trades correctly to avoid that risk, to avoid that emotional response. Think about this, guys. If you traded this weekly chart, entered on this candle, could you come back and just set, reset your stop at the end of every week and follow this up? I want you to notice that entry in here was about $200. If you traded this all the way up into here until you got stopped out over here, you're over $300 in that trade. So let me ask you, does it work? In fact, did it even get tricked anywhere in here? It just stayed green. gave us an opportunity to manage this trade comfortably without having all of the risk or all of the micromanagement problems because we're just not sure where we should be placing our stop loss. Okay, 
Now look at the potential short. Bob S. mentioned a possible bear flag, a possible failure pattern could be coming into play here. Well, let's take a look at, let's compare this trade, this long trade here to the short trade. Would you guys say if we entered this trade right in here on this candle, we have a pretty low risk entry into the trade? If we enter this trade right on this candle, we have a substantially different risk profile on this position, don't we? So that volatility stop can help you decide, look, this just isn't my trade yet. The setup is there. I like the setup, but it's just not my trade yet. Too much risk in the position. Now I get this question all the time because I'm getting more and more folks that are um, interested in hike and ashy candles. It's um, as a matter of fact, guys, I want to send you over to my YouTube channel. If if you're not subscribed to my YouTube channel, could you go over there, click that subscribe button and then click on that bell icon so that you can be notified when I post a video. I've got over 600 videos on the channel right now. And there's already some videos on there about volatility stop. But I had some questions about it the other day and I thought, you know, it might be a good time to revisit this. Talk about the volatility stop. Talk about the purpose for it. The purpose is to help us find that stop loss. The purpose is to help us avoid high risk trades. And the purpose is to help us see support, resistance, and trend. Would you guys um, agree that this is showing us when the stock is in chop? It's showing us when the stock is in trend. It's showing us when we failed and we're underneath resistance. Where we shouldn't be looking for long trades. This is something I used to do all the time. And there's probably a lot of folks in here willing to admit this. Stock pulls back like this and I see that candle and I would immediately think, oh, it's going to go up from here. And I'd buy that candle. Anybody ever done that? Man, shop has to go up. Look how far it's fallen. It must go up. Got to go up from here. And I'd buy that candle not understanding that I was on the wrong side of the trade. It was, it's, it's, it's one of those things that's really, really frustrating. The volatility stop can help you with that if you're struggling um, with that situation. Now let's take a look at some other, some other charts. Let's take a look at a chart like Dollar Tree and let's go to a daily chart. Take a look at Dollar Tree. In this chart on Dollar Tree, can we clearly see where Dollar Tree is short and where our stop losses should have been to follow this trade short to the downside. Does it help us see when we've gone from bearish to bullish and the opportunity to maybe get into this trade to the long side and manage this trade up? It's pretty clear, right? Here we are underneath a major price resistance point in this chart. And notice we're getting some volatility in this stock back and forth, back and forth, back and forth as it's challenging this support level right here. Can we hold it with the volatility that's in the market? But notice the volatility stop so far has remained green. If this can hold on and push through up here, does anyone see where there might be an opportunity here in Dollar Tree? That opportunity to push out. It may have to do something like this. Push out, pull back, hold, and then set right there and then give us a buy signal. And that volatility stop will be moving up right along with us to help us see that potential entry. Uh, John, I get that question all the time. There's videos on the YouTube channel. I don't have time to explain it tonight. That gets 
<clears throat> for option traders, um, it's really important to know how to do this. And you want to be able to do that with um, it, it's some simple tools to do it. Um, check the YouTube channel for the videos on that, on how to manage those um, trades. And I use conditional orders if that helps at all. <clears throat> okay. So that is the volatility stop in a nutshell. It helps us see support, resistance, and trend. It helps us accurately understand what's going on in the volatility of the market and put us in the best place to protect our trade. Okay? When the volatility stop separates away, gets very far away from current price, we're taking a high risk in the trade, right? taking a high risk in a trade when we get really far away from these prices. If we can wait for the lower risk trades, be patient, we have a higher probability of winning. Okay. For, the, for this position, okay. Now I'm going to show you just a one other configuration of the volatility stop. And honestly, this is really kind of cheating in a way. We call it the trendinator. The trendinator is really, it's just the volatility stop. But you can see my volatility stop right here is based upon the price of the chart, the main chart. But what if I switch that over and have the volatility stop? just wrap around a moving average. What if I have it wrap around the eight exponential moving average? So essentially, I have an indicator that is the eight exponential moving average, okay? But the reason it works so well for folks is because it very clearly displays to us when we're in a bearish trend and when we're in a bullish trend. It gives that very clear description, okay, of when we should be trading, when we should not be trading. Let's go to a five-minute chart. Is it pretty easy to see on the five-minute chart when we're trending up or trending down? Or when we're in chop, when we're bouncing back and forth between prices? We don't get those clear signals, right? Remember, if my volatility stop is green and right in here, I want to see that price is either moved up and pulled back or moved up and consolidates across here for that entry. I'm waiting for the buyers to step in. If it's a short trade and the, we've fallen below the volatility stop and our volatility stop has turned red here, I'm always going to wait for that push back up to fail at resistance before I find that entry or that consolidation over to find that entry underneath that volatility stop. That prevents me from catching these, trying to chase this chase over and then just having it fail, trying to chase this chase or this, this um, crossover and having it fail. This is not a crossover setup. Okay, we're looking for those places where we not only cross over, but then we rest or consolidate. We get an entry relatively close to our, um, to our stop loss and we have a winning trade. Okay, is this making some sense guys? So let's flip over and let's talk real briefly about Heike and Ashi. I'm getting more and more following of people wanting to trade Heike and Ashi. Um, 
The Heiken Ashi uses an average of prices. It smooths out prices. There's no gaps in Heiken Ashi. And I get the question all the time, does it work on a Heiken Ashi chart? Let's go to a Heiken Ashi chart. Let me darken this up so you can see it. And let me remove these averages that I'm showing on this chart so we can focus on the price and the volatility stop. So this is a 15 minute price action chart with the volatility stop on it. Does it work with the Heiken Ashi? As a matter of fact, it works very, very well with the Heiken Ashi. Let's do a comparison here. Let's use shop and let's do that weekly of shop. Does it work on the Heiken Ashi with shop? works very, very well, right? What about a five minute chart? Can we make a five minute chart work? Let's look at that diamonds chart on the five minute. Can we make this chart work for us so that we can make money with this indicator? Now, keep in mind, we got a very volatile market right now. So we're whipping back and forth a lot, but you can see how the volatility stop is giving us opportunities for entries that are low risk for the long side, giving us opportunities for entries for trades to the short side, stop loss up here, and showing us good clear signals where those opportunities exist. It also displays to us pretty clearly when we get way too volatile, get way too out of whack, and our volatility stop is just too far away from prices to prevent us to get from getting in and chasing that volatility. Okay, and by the way, it works exactly the same way. If I were to take this volatility stop and instead of using it on the price of the chart, wrap it around a moving average. It's going to work exactly the same way, showing us trend when we're on the right side of a trade and when we are not. Okay, there is one difference to the, to the volatility stop that I use on Heiken Ashi. And this is just due to the calculation of the Heiken Ashi candles. I've adjusted this a little bit. It's 10 periods. 1.35 is the is the multiplier. The other one on standard candlesticks is 10 period 1.50. So it's just a tiny little bit different on the Heiken Ashi to give you a very similar reading to a standard chart. Okay. Now, let me show you how I use this indicator in combination with other things for potential entries into a trade. Um, on the YouTube channel, there is a full explanation of what I'm going to explain to you right now. We call it the 3-8 trap. On the Heiken Ashi, it's actually a 2-6. All they are is moving averages. Okay, so we have a moving average 17 that shows us trend. Whoops, not that one. A moving average 17 that shows us trend. Okay, it's a 17 exponential. Can you guys see it's kind of showing us trend? I'm gonna change this back to price. Okay, we have a uh, a, th a three exponential moving average that shows us that quick price action and we have an eight exponential moving average in the trade now i'm going to get rid of price here for a second so we can just take a look at these averages and let me dim out the volatility stop as well so that we can focus on these averages 
So what I'm looking for in these um, in these averages is I'm looking for that price pattern where price crosses above the three exponential stays uh, crosses above or stays above the eight exponential. And then I look for these resting pullbacks, these consolidations that show up in here and hold up in here. So I'm going to be watching for a buy signal right in this area. All of those have to stay above the 17. If the three crosses down and crosses back up, that is not a trade. That's showing us whip in the market. Crosses down, crosses back up. We want to avoid those trades. Short trades are when we cross down. You can see right in this area. Let me blow this area up just a little bit. Right in here. 8, 17, all of a sudden we're, um, they're all on the wrong side of each other. We flip over to the wrong side. Okay, down. Short trades will set up right in here. Okay, now if I combine the volatility stop to that, and I'm going to keep the volatility stop, I'm going to keep the opacity low so it doesn't overwhelm the chart. Notice how we can use that in combination to show us when we have low risk entries or high risk entries into the trade. By the way, folks have been using this chart very effectively, very effectively, making money and gaining a lot of confidence. No, I don't use the 34, um, Steve A. I'm using the 17. 17 on the stock chart, 17 on the Heiken Ashi. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, please, if you guys would go over and, and, um, Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Those videos are available there for you. Um, so you can get more explanation on this and um, get, get better at this pattern. So for example, when I look at this chart, I can see that there's a very good trade setup right here. I don't even need the price. Now I can't tell you if this stock gapped away here, if the diamonds gapped away here, or if I had a good clean entry right here. But you can see how the three moved up, held above the eight, were trending, and our volatility stop is very close in here to price. So if I were to turn price back on in this chart, let's see if there's an entry right in there. Anybody like this entry right here? That's a very clean 3A trap volatility stop entry. Okay. So let's let's take this one step further. Let's let's be fair to this. Um, I'm showing you guys this is a weekly chart in here. Let's take this to a five minute chart. Are there trades in here using the volatility stop <clears throat> with the 3 8 trap in play? Okay, does anybody see any really awesome, beautiful potential setup? Are all the things firing in, in unison right here? There's a five minute trade right there. Bam. Very clean, very low risk entry. There's a trade here, but just notice that it, had you entered this trade, your stop loss initially has to be a little bit further away. Notice the volatility in the chart here. So you can take that trade, but you have to make that decision. Is this too much risk for me on that trade?
if we follow this back in the chart when we get in these trends up or down we have patterns that turn out to be very very clean we have to be patient for the trade notice the three stays above the eight the eight stays above the 34 volatility stop stays green we get that little resting pullback entry signal okay now you can see right here this one is not as clean this one pulled back enough that we broke the green volatility stop and everything turned red what I usually tell people when you're learning this pattern is to just avoid this trade. Just pass on it because we're below that price resistance. After you get more comfortable reading these patterns, you may choose saying the three and the eight, everything is holding up very well. When this candle pattern comes in here, if you set a price alert right along here, enter that trade, you could be in just as good a shape with a very low risk entry on the trade. Okay, but in, when you're learning this pattern, I kind of suggest it just being very patient to stay away from those positions. Okay. Uh, Barry, a two hour trade? Yeah, of course. It would work on, it, it works on any pattern. Let's um let's go to like Visa and let's go to a two hour chart and take a look. Now, right now in Visa, you can see we're just an absolute mess in this chart. Back and forth, back and forth, no continuity whatsoever in the chart. This is where you just absolutely want to avoid trading. There's no continuity, there's no good price pattern, there's no trend. It's just an absolute mess. But let's back this up over here when we do have our 17 EMA trending. Can you guys find entries in here? Maybe an entry right into this area. Maybe an entry right over here into this area for winning trades on a two hour chart. Pull this back even further and you're just when we get into these nice trends and you'll just find more and more of these charts that set up and as a matter of fact there's plenty of trades that would set up short right in here cross down cross back up stays underneath the red there's our failure stop losses in here possible short trade Yeah, that, that current price action is extremely ugly in that chart. How about down over here? And we know that we're in a crummy market right now. It's just really a challenging market. But look at these price patterns in here. So a two hour looks like it works fine. So what you want to do, guys, is, is set up these indicators. And then go ahead and go through and just look at a bunch of charts look at the potential setups on the time frame that you trade and set up set yourself a plan on how you want to use these indicators you can see by doing that by having that plan by having those indicators that show you so clearly when we have those clean setups we can take fewer trades and make more money with less risk We can avoid markets like this where the market is just showing us nothing over here and we can just avoid it outright. Don't want to trade that. Okay. Just don't want to trade that. What if we looked at like um, Dollar General on a two hour chart? Yeah, still ugly here. Too much too much whip back and forth. I was trying to think of something that um, right now it's really difficult to find anything that holds into 
much of a trend for very long. Procter & Gamble, P&G, a lot of back and forth in that as well. Now, what I will tell you with all this back and forth, all of this noise, if we looked at that same chart with the Heiken and Ashi, I'm gonna go back here to my regular volatility stop. Okay, and go to a two hour on this. We're gonna see smoother price action and possibly easier trades to, to take. But still, we just have a very jumbled up market right now that's very difficult to trade. And what the volatility stop and what our indicators are showing us by the way, our six and our two on the high Kanashi. The reason they changed to six and two is because of the math on how high Kanashi are calculated. The same price action is showing up here. The same potential trades, the same trap setup in that chart. Okay. Makes some sense. Thanks guys, KBH, KBH, two hour hike and ashy. Guys, see any trade setting up here? Two pulling back to the six, buy signals occurring right in here, buy signals occurring right in here, right in here, right in here. Winning trades. If we look at the standard chart, Two hour. Same thing is true. We're finding those buy signals in the same basic locations in here, in here, here, on up the trade. Real nice one here. Possible right over here. Okay. Now that volatility stop, remember what it's there to do. And that's why we're really here. By the way, if you guys want to learn about the 38 trap, there's videos on the YouTube channel for that. There's also a complete strategy video on the Heike and Ashi for this same, for that setup that I just showed you. But the volatility stop, what I'm focusing on here is how that volatility stop helps us see when we have lower risk entries or high risk entries. Does this look like a low risk entry to you right in here, guys? That nice bullish candle and stop loss right underneath there. I mean, how sweet is that? We have a confirmed area where we can see our stop loss very clearly, enter that trade, and then just follow along. We don't have to micromanage. We just follow the trade. Okay. Exits are a couple different ways, and I get this question all the time, Rick. You need to watch some of the videos on the YouTube channel on this. But exits need to be, particularly in a market like this, have something to do with your trade goal. Okay? Now, a lot of people go, well, what do you mean trade goal? I want as much money as I can always get. I'm always swinging for the fence. I'm always trying to hit a home run. Well, let me ask you, how's that working for you? Particularly in this market, it's not working, is it? So oftentimes when I go into a trade, I find my entry into the position, I set my stop loss on the trade, and I automatic, automatically calculate in my trade goals and where I'm going to exit that trade. Now, one of the things that Rightway Options people see me do a lot is I sell as the stock is still going up. I'm not trying to catch every penny to the upside. Okay, so let me explain that. Let's say this right here is a 10% gain. I 
I enter this here with a three contract trade. I can close one, capture 10%. Moves up here, capture 15% on the second contract. Then and only then do I think about trailing the last little bit after I've put some money in my account to see if I can really let that run to a higher for a bigger move. But I'm always looking to put some money in my account. So you should have some kind of trade goal. By the way, you could you could make your trade goal this three contracts here. Take two off here. Just manage this one up to here. I ask this question a lot of folks in right way options. How many of you can go broke making 15% a trade? Even if, you, even if that 15% is 50 bucks, how many $50 wins does it take to have a really good year? A really good year. Well, let's let's be a little bit realistic here, Eric. I don't know what size your account is. Let me ask you this, guy, guys. If you could make and this is for you guys that have smaller accounts. Just scale this up. If you trade one contract trades, okay? Let's just scale this up. And you make 50 bucks on a trade. And let's say you, can you think you could find four stocks over the course of a week that could make you 50 bucks? Anybody think that seems realistic? Not even a trade a day to make you 50 bucks. Okay, so in that week, you make a hundred bucks, right? Times four, times 12, that's 4,800 a year. How many of you are trading accounts that that would be a remarkable return for the year? You trade a $10,000 account, you have nearly a 50% return for the year. Isn't that a different way of thinking rather than always trying to hit the home run trade? How many of you would, would just want to throw up thinking about all the $50 wins that you've had that you let turn into a loss, never took the profit? Way too many, right? We all have. And that's why exits need to have some kind of a basis in your goal. What are you trying to achieve? I get this question or this uh, from folks a lot of time. I, do, I, I coach, individually coach almost every day uh, folks anymore. And I'm working with people um, all the time to try and improve their training. And first, first thing they will they will resist is, wait a minute, you want me to take small gains? I, I, I want to get rich quick. Let me ask you, how many guys, how many, how many of you have ever heard of a money manager that consistent, consistently averages more than 20% a year gain? Anybody? If there was a fund manager that consistently made 20% a year, you couldn't get into that fund if you tried. It would be full. Okay? So imagine you do the calculation. If I could make 20% this year by taking small gains. Yeah, Bernie made off. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
If you could make take 20% gains every year, then just do the math backwards. If you have a $10,000 account, how much do you need to make this year to make 20%? Now, that doesn't mean that you have to stop when you make your 20%. Good personal friend of mine, his first year of trading, starting with a $20,000 account, made a 65% return in his account. His average win, and by the way, the video where I interviewed him is on the YouTube channel. His average win over the course of the year was $120 a trade. And he made a 65% return. His biggest winning trade the entire year was an accident. Entered the trade and the stock gapped up and he had 300 and some dollars in it. That was his biggest winning trade the entire year. Okay. How about one of the members here just recently trading Coca-Cola on a 15 minute chart? Using the 3 8 trap strategy, reported multiple winning trades over the course of the last few days and said it was his best day that he'd had in a long time trading the 3 8 trap or trading anything. Best winning days. Okay. Don't put obstacles in your place to say, I go, oh, that works for some people, that wouldn't work for me. No, that's not true, guys. The reason it's not working for you is because you don't have a plan. We give lip service to a plan all the time, but we never commit to a strategy, to a plan, and then we don't practice it. We learn something like this tonight, and what do we want to do? Tomorrow morning, open up and trade it. How successful do you guys think you're going to be kicking a football for one, t going to a class, kicking a football through an upright and showing up on a professional field and try to kick a football? How much success are you going to have? You're going to get clobbered, right? So when you learn a strategy like this, you need to practice it. You need to repeat it over and over. Don't just take this strategy, give lip service to the idea of a plan, and run out there, and then 10 days later, you can say, well, that doesn't work. Just like everything else, it doesn't work. No, you didn't work. It's on you. Because you didn't follow through. You didn't commit to a plan. You didn't set rules. You didn't follow through to practice those entries, exits, and exercise those trade strategies. If you do that, you will start to see more success in your trading. And when markets are like this, providing us just junky, junky price action and charts, you're going to see that too, and you're going to say, you know what, I'm just standing aside. I'm going to keep my hands in my pocket. I'm going to protect my capital. I don't have to trade this mess. I can wait until the market improves. Get in the game. Trade less, make more. Doesn't that sound like a good plan? Trade less, make more. But we're only going to do that if we commit to a strategy like this. Now, the volatility stop can help a ton. Because we've all done this. I've done this where I've chased a trade short where I shouldn't have. Traced, chased a trade long where I shouldn't have. How many of you have ever entered a trade and just felt like, man, there must be somebody watching me on camera? Because as soon as you enter the trade, you get punished. I mean, it's almost immediately you buy that trade and it starts moving against you. That's because we chased. We chased a position 
We lost focus to our plan. We broke our rules. And consequently, we get punished for it. So we have to be no more deliberate in our planning, more deliberate in the trades that we take. Make sure that you're staying committed. Oh, yeah, and it can be just absolutely immediate, can it, Betsy? Like almost the tick after. What the heck, right? You enter that trade and it's just like, are you kidding me? <laughs> Again? Um, Steve, no, the volatility stop is not my favorite exit indicator. It's not my favorite entry indicator. Price action. Price action is your entry. Price action is your exit. You should be focusing on the price of the chart. The indicators are there just to give you an aid. Focus on the price action. It's the price action that makes your entry, tells you when it's time to go long, without predicting, without speculating. Okay. Where's an entry in Coke? Well, there's several over here. Be a pretty good entry into Coke right in here, right? Three holds the eight. Buyer step in, pop up out of there, there's a winning trade. The down trade. Move over here. Fails, rallies back toward resistance. Stop loss goes in here. You might enter a trade here and get stopped out on this one. There's a short entry there, followed the rules, but this one stopped out just because of the volatility. So where's the next trade? Moves down, consolidates over. There's your failure. Stop loss right here. Winning trade. How about this one right here? Rally back to resistance. Bearish engulfing candle. Enter that trade. Winning trade. Just follow the price. Follow the follow the um, the indicator um, as it's as it's designed to do. It's it's telling us when we have a high probability trade. Do some of these trades fail? Absolutely, you're not going to win every trade. Particularly in a volatile market like this, you're not going to win every trade. When the market starts to smooth out, your um, your expectancy rate will move up. Okay. Let me ask you a quick question here, kind of before we finish up. In this market, should you be swinging for the fence or trying to hit base hits? Should you be taking profits faster than you normally would in a really good trending market? Okay, so if you decide to trade these really quick patterns, make sure you're quick on taking the profits as well. Okay, you've got to practice that skill. It's that skill of that moves. You hit that goal, 10%, take the profit. Like I showed you that we did in diamonds the other day in right way. I did this live in front of everyone. Took this entry. Set a 10% profit target on this. Got triggered out of this trade over here. 15 minute chart made 10%. Now, guys, in, in this crummy market, to make 10% intraday like that, pretty darn nice. Because you can see after that, there's been no really good trades. We whip up and whip back, whip up, whip back. This failure pattern, 
certainly could have been a trade. Had you taken that position, you'd have been paid really big on the gap down here. Okay. But there haven't been too many trades since this one right here that was a really clean setup. So you have to be choosy and pick your trades carefully. Now, by the way, you could have just trailed this up and maybe caught a little more money in this trade. But like I said, I went into this trade with the idea I'm going to make, I wanted a 10% return on the trade. So I had a limit order to get out of the trade exactly at 10% for my entry price. It took me out automatically. I, I wasn't even watching it. And the reason I do that, guys, is because on a 15-minute chart, on a short-term chart like this, I'm wasting my time watching this thing wiggle around. I need to be looking for the next trade. So I come back over here occasionally, readjust my stop, and then let this trade work. And take me out. I don't have time to sit and watch this wiggle around. My job is to find the next trade. Okay, and that's why I do that kind of thing. Folks in Rightway have seen me do this several times on an intraday trade. Trade is up 20%. I just put a trailing stop on it and I stop watching it. I don't even look at it anymore until it stops out. Because my job now is to look for the next trade. I've already won on this one. I've got it locked in. If I sit around watching that wiggle around, I'm wasting my time. Okay? Cool stuff? So guys, I hope you got something out of this tonight. I really appreciate you being here. Um, I, I do want to um, remind you guys one more time, if you're still struggling with this, I want you to go over to my YouTube channel, subscribe to that YouTube channel, and you know, click on that bell icon so that you'll, you'll be notified when I post these videos. And I put, I, I put all of this effort into putting that stuff out there. And I really want to help traders do a better job with their trading. And if you can get over there and watch some of this stuff, if you are confused, if you need it repeated again, okay, take the time to go watch those videos. The answers are there. We have to put in the work and the practice and the time to get better. Okay. So take advantage of that. And I would really appreciate it while you're over there. If you watch a video, if it, if it helped you, if it made some sense to you, click the thumbs up and leave a quick comment. That helps those videos get shown to more folks. Trying to help as many people as we can improve their trading. Okay. Everyone, I want to say thank you very, very much. Oh, thanks, Steve. If anyone is interested, take a trial of right way. Tell you what, I'll I'll do one better for any new p person that wants to that is interested in a service like this. And I'm certainly not trying to sell you anything. If you have some interest in it, I'm going to give you a coupon code. When you go to check out for a membership of Rightway Options, it'll work on monthly, quarterlies, it'll work on all membership areas for all new subscribers that want to come in. Use that code and it'll save you 50% off the price that's listed on the website. Half off. I'm doing that just because the market stinks on ice right now. Absolutely stinks on ice. And I want to help folks out 
as much as I can. Okay. So thank you guys. I appreciate it very much. Have a great evening. We'll see you all right back here, bright and early tomorrow morning, 5 a.m. I do the morning market prep video. It will be posted on YouTube prior to the market open. Everyone take care. Have a great evening. Thanks for being here.